Warner Brothers and Discovery. So we have an update. We have an update on the merger. Now, we've been talking about this. How soon is it going to happen? What's going on behind the scenes? You know, we've talked about it on Vodka Stream, Patreon Stream. We've talked about a lot of things. A lot of things. So a new article came out today that actually talks about this from Deadline. And here's our article right here. So Warner Media Discovery deal on track to close in first half, but details sparse. We have our go-to market stra uh, strategy ready, Discovery CFO. And there's that ugly logo that nobody fucking likes. <laughs> I mean, it's still a bad logo. I mean, can somebody from now till, till it happens, can we get somebody to redesign the logo? Because it's just not, it's not good. It's really not that good. Executives on both sides of the $43 billion dollar Warner Media Discovery merger again confirmed the deal is on track to close by the middle of next year. Middle of next year, so we still got a, we still got a, we still got some time, guys. But details otherwise remain scarce on the combination that will reshape the media industry. In presentations uh, at a media conference yesterday and today, Discovery CFO Gunnar Weiden ooh, it says we almost sounds like that Weiden Weidenfels, AT and T CFO Pascal Desroches said they don't expect regulatory roadblocks in the transaction. The telecom giant agreed in May to spin off Warner Media, which will combine with Discovery to create a behemoth run by Discovery CEO David Zaslav. Among an army of other assets, the deal joins HBO Max and Discovery Plus. Wall Streeters and industry players are eager, eager to know how the streaming services will be rolled out and priced. We have our go-to market strategy essentially ready, says Weidenfels. We've got our ducks aligned here, but obviously, as you know, we're not in a position to speak about that right now. He added in uh, response to questions by Jessica Reef Ulrich, an analyst from Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Discovery is starting to set up our integration management office so they're like i said they're already getting things rolling there's only so much you can do in terms of really detailed work for closing the deal as you can imagine but i am very pleased with how the team has been set up the strategy then then as now will be aligned around what the okay so here it is guys here's the good quote right here here's the good quote right here the strategy then as now will be aligned around what the customer wants. What the customer wants. Okay? And what do we want, guys? Oh, we know what we want. Yes, we know exactly what we want. He confirmed initial cost synergies uh, of about $3 billion. Zaslav will likely be pressed on the issues again at another media conference next week hosted by Goldman Sachs. AT&T Chief Financial Officer DeRoches, the former CFO of WarnerMedia, said AT&T couldn't be more pleased with how the process is going to unload the entertainment business it acquired in 2018 for $85 billion. Yeah, AT&T is like, we don't know, we don't take it. Please take it. Be smooth about it. You guys take it. We tried. We tried. I don't know what's going on with these guys. I don't know. I don't get it. Okay, they they, they were trying to create something. They fucked over some people. I, I, I don't get it. Yeah. We are exactly where we thought we would be at the stage of the process, and we expect the transaction to close in the first half of 2022. So we're really pleased with how thing, or how that's moving along. Here's the reality. When you look at the rules around antitrust, there is no reason why this merger should not be approved, especially given the changes in, com in the competitive landscape and the participation by big tech companies in media. When you look at the traditional rules of antitrust, we feel really good about the ability of this to be approved. And then it says right here, this is analyst Dave Barden prodded him gently. There's a lot of people that don't yet uh, that don't know yet about the transaction. It's complicated. The reverse Morris, uh, this is all a bunch of logistics that I'm like, I don't even know. But, you know, of course, there's going to be people that are going to be asking questions, how it's all going to go. I mean, it's a big fucking merger. It's a big merger. So, I mean, I could 
read the rest of this, but it's just all the logistics about everything. But the biggest thing was that quote right there. That quote right there will align around what the customer wants. There's the key right there. That right there. That right there. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. We, I have a feeling that Toby and Ann are, are getting their resumes ready because, well, they definitely don't know what the customer wants. That's for sure. Jesus. You know, Hamada, who knows what's going to happen with him. But, you know, at least we know things are moving smoothly. Something could happen. Something could be interesting. But I think it'll be OK. I think it'll be OK. And uh, I think it'll, you know, Zaslav will come in and he's probably already got stuff planning. I don't know. We've always talked about with the recent stuff that we've that's been announced, like, you know, all the Batman stuff. Black Canary series, the stuff that's going to HBO Max. I mean, they know all this. I don't know if they're already in the decision making. Probably not. Who knows? I don't know. Like I said, I don't know the logistics. We can assume that they're already like, hey, you should do that. And they're looking at every little nook and cranny. They're looking at all the numbers, all the analytics. They're looking at everything. They are very aware of what happened when it came to restore the Snyderverse. That hashtag 1.5 million. They are very aware. Of course they are. Of course they are. They're seeing everything. They, they're probably aware that we want that Batfleck movie. We, they, they're very aware. They're very aware. 100% that you don't go into this thing not being aware of all that. It, but, it, you know, but at the same time, guys, at the same, at the same time, we are damaged goods. Okay? We're damaged goods. Let's be a little hesitant because every time somebody new came in, and Walter, whoever, every time they came in, we were like, they're gonna say, they're gonna do it. Yeah, they're gonna release the Snyder Cut. Watch, that's our guy, that's our girl. Yeah, it's gonna do it. And they did. So be a little hesitant. Gotta be a little hesitant, okay? We're damaged goods, we're traumatized, okay? This is a whole new relationship that we're in, so we're gonna be a little. You know, don't just jump into bed the first day, the first date. I don't know why my analogy is just going right to there, but it is. <clears throat> I'm just saying. Don't get your, I mean, I, yeah, we can get start getting our hopes up a little bit, but, you know, for all we know, you know, I'm just saying, just uh, hold it down, hold it down a little bit, okay? We'll be, we could be excited and we could be like, and then if we hear that Toby and Ann are out the door, Yes, we could celebrate that for sure. But let's not just immediately think that they're just going to be like, air cut, death stroke, bat flick. You know, we don't. Let's just kind of uh, keep it. Uh, let's keep cool, guys. Let's keep cool. Let's be good fans. Let's be good fans. That's all I ask. Let's just be good, calm, collective fans. And just be like, just walk in and, yeah, just shake the hand. We'll see what happens. <laughs> That's all I say. For God's sakes, man. Okay.